himself to get back to the top. And if there's any man who can be a dangerous threat any night of the week, it is the Savage Weight himself. Stylistically matches up with any combatant he goes into that ring with. You want to wrestle? He can wrestle. You want to throw bows? He'll hit you ten times harder than you've ever been hit. The man of the WWE is currently one half the tag team champions, along with EJ and Duca. He has tournament experience in their Opera Cup. He won the Deadlock Pro National Championship Tournament in North Carolina not that long ago as well. So if you think Tankman has a disadvantage, being about 350, don't think that at all. He's got the endurance. I just saw him a week ago, the IWC Super Indy Tournament. But what about Fred Yehi, his history? The Ring of Honor Pure Rules Tournament that uh, we christened the Pure Champion in uh, Ring of Honor Championship lore. Uh, Fred Yehi beat Silas Young in that particular tournament. And there may be no bigger hill to climb when you talk about legacy in AAW than Silas Young. That'll be a big advantage mentally. High school, collegiate, county, state, opens. Yehi has competed in tournaments amateurly and professionally and we know we can go 60-minute draw with Alexander just over a year ago in this building. And one thing that you know about Fred Yehi, much like that team saying in the previous match, he's a guy that wrestles his uh, wrestles his match, fights his fight. He makes his opponents come to him, and he makes them go stylistically against him. He doesn't try and match their style. He makes them wrestle the, the, the pace that Fred Yehi wants to wrestle. Yehi will look to ground Tankman. Look to have a dominant position, mount him, those rapid punches, the Koji clutch. And I don't care how big you are, how powerful you are, when the air pass is closed, you're in trouble. Tankman is a striker, and he's a very mobile big man. Think Big Van Vader. Think Bam Bam Bigelow. And yeah, he can strike with the best of them as well. Tankman may want a more open matchup to use his weight as an offensive weapon. And Yehi is first taste of what Calvin can dish out. And I feel like it's only going to get worse from here. Calvin Tankman calling it out, saying, hey, this is my time. This is my opportunity to take over AEW and make a name for myself. And you beat a former AEW champion. That makes headlines. You are a made man overnight, especially oh. knocking him out of the... Something as prestigious as a line of tournament, but there you see the quickness of Yehi as he pounces. Yehi absolutely baited him in that, in that chop fest. But takes him down. Tankman standing his ground, making Yehi run into him. Yeah. It's like running into a brick wall. Yehi does everything with such intensity, but you can need every bit of that to move somebody like Tank. And Yehi's face, the Jake somethings and the Brian Cages and the, the, the Walters, now known as the Gunthers, but. Tankman is none of those oh men. Calvin is his own entity to figure out. Heavyweight Hustle meets him with that back elbow and now sends him into the buckles, charges in with a body attack. Scoop and a slam. Tankman now hits the ropes. Nobody home. Oh, oh Koji Clutch! Koji Clutch locked center of win! Yay high looking to capitalize! Yay high looking to choke him out! But Tankman able to roll to the ropes. Oh! And if he didn't have yeah. that bottom foot draped over the rope, he was tapping out. That, that could have been a submission. That could have been a ploy for Tankman to get Yehi to break quicker. I'm not sure. But either way, Calvin didn't give Yehi an opening. It was just, what, a tenth of a second? Yehi got a little bit of distance and was able to pounce just like that. That's what Yehi does. He's so dangerous at it. You don't need to be softened up to get caught in his clutches. It's the definition of giving somebody an inch and they take it a mile. Yeah, and when you talk, oh man, when you talk about Tankman and heavyweight hustle, that means the work ethic, that means the diversity in his style, it means the fact that he's not going to rest on his laurels, and he's going to be better, he's going to be the best athlete he can, he's going to excel every single facet of this sport he can get his hands on, can Calvin Tankman, and he's going to need to be proficient everywhere possible. I mean, I think it's only a matter of time before Calvin Tankman etches his name as the most dominant big man in the sport today. And Tankman is going to make a big statement here. And it could be this week and powerbomb on the apron. If Tankman says move, I'll be in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm like finding myself in another venue. Into the guardrails goes Fred Yehi. Heavyweight hustle Calvin Tankman. Look at 
take advantage. What do you consider this an upset? I would consider it an upset in this building, but I don't consider it an upset based on skill. This is a place that Yei, much like a Josh Alexander, much like an ACH we talked earlier, Yei has made this his house. He's made this uh, himself the man to beat for many, many months. I think Calvin Tank can be anybody on any given day. But if you do it here at a historic venue like Logan Square Auditorium, that amplifies the headline. Now Tankman trapping Yehi on that guardrail. Oh, and Yehi, all it takes is that split second. Tankman got distracted by the fans at ringside. Oh, my God. Notice the difference, Tyler. Yehi fires away, strike after strike, and the eyes on the window to the soul. It's like it wakes Calvin up more, one shot, and Yehi's head over heels. That's the advantage of that power, 350 behind those blows. Yehi's an adept striker. He's getting accuracy. He's getting them where he wants them, but he just, just doesn't have the sheer force that Calvin has to just overwhelm you. And now Tankman stalking Yehi. Normally, Yehi is the guy that picks the pace and you know says this is how we're going to do this, but Tankman just using his physical, you know, just physically just dominating Yehi right now. Well, I mean, Tyler, to the point you made a moment ago, do you think it could be a case, and I think it may be, that Yehi was underestimating Calvin Tankman? Was Yehi thinking title? Was Yehi thinking finals? And looking at the opening round as a formality? Val, stop trying your drops on his head. I, I, you know. You never want to say that an athlete the caliber of Fred Yehi is going to overlook anybody taking up the cover. Up to count. Again, barely able to wiggle his way free. But I do think that there is some validity to that claim. I do think that Yehi kind of looked at this as, I know that I can beat Calvin Tankman. I know that I can beat everybody else in this tournament, but I want Jake something. I want that AAW championship. Yehi may look at this and think, well, Calvin doesn't have the cachet in AAW. He doesn't have the equity than I do when it comes to win-loss record or resume. But to me, that is a motivating factor for Calvin Tankman and not a detriment to him. This is, could be a coming out party for heavyweight hustle if he has his say, but Yehi now cinching his claws on a part of the body and sometimes that is step one to a very dangerous road for whoever looks on the other side of the ring from the savage way. Yehi, like a piranha. Once he finds where he's going to attack, he doesn't stop. He's absolutely unrelenting. He, nope. can't, he can't trap him. He can't, he can't get his body around the girth of Calvin Tate. I noticed Yehi tried to switch that hold up and not have the shoulder, the point of pressure on the abdominal stretch, but work on the wrist lock, which would help Yehi's balance and also help him try to affect the grip of Tankman. But to your point, just the, the sheer size is too much. And Yehi violently takes out the knee. Yehi goes behind and catches him. And such precision, such measure, and such just remorselessness. And that's what Yehi's MO is. You find somewhere where you can attack, and you don't stop attacking it until you get the, the victory, whether it's a submission, whether it's a 1 2 3. And you can think back to the. Mitch Warners and the Manders and even Matt Fitchett towards the end of that reign, just the, the, the sheer toll physically that opposing Fred Yehi took on those men, the blood that was spilled, the tempers that were raised, and Yehi, like a machine, like a robot, just dead set on destruction, kept his focus the whole time. You know, it's there, there comes a point with every athlete where that, that instinct kicks in and you just go on autopilot. And for Fred Yehi, when he's on that, when that instinct does kick in, it makes him more vicious and dominant than he's ever been. Yeah, all with the motivation of getting back that big gold that he probably feels he shouldn't have lost. And Tankman is showing signs of, of losing equilibrium, losing some strength. He did not have his legs under him. Yehi, the rear naked choke. Tankman turns to the side to take away the pressure, but now down with the elbows. Point of the elbow being driven into the temple, trips him up, complete shot, now floats over, Koji Clutch, center ring, Tankman has nowhere to go! Tankman can't reach for the rope if he taps again like he did in the first attempt, this match is over! Tankman has nowhere to go, he's stuck, and Yehi just wrenching with everything he's got in this hole, 
Tinkman has his eyes on that bottom rope, trying to throw, trying to take his fingernails and do whatever he can to stop from tapping out. He's grabbing the canvas. Gilmar has his fingers locked. There's no way to break that grip with the position Tankman is in. He's got to use that strength, that mass. But will his body give out? Tankman, a fingertip away from the bottom rope. Oh. Yehai came through those rabbit punches maybe a half a step too late. Calvin found salvation, but at what cost? The damage has been done to Tankman. Yehai's in the driver's seat. And now Yehai thinking, what more am I going to have to do? A lot of times Yehai's thought turns from, what am I going to have to do to, how much can I get away with? The winner of this contest joins Masha Slamovich and Hakeem Zayn in the second round. And kind of an important point here, we don't have public bracketing. No. I don't believe the athletes in this tournament are privy to the bracketing. That's going to be taken care of uh, during a draw tomorrow. From what I understand, it's a uh, a blind draw tomorrow by AEW management. All the winners of this tournament go into a pool. Their names are picked out. Uh, you won't know who you face until that music hits. Hey, I wouldn't be the one to have to seed these athletes from 1 to 17 and decide <laughs> who's better than who. That'll be a, a tougher argument than the PWI 500 debates on Twitter every year. So that's the, that's the way to do it. Let's leave it up to chance. and That's the mark of a champion, the mark of an athlete. You don't have 24 hours to prepare. You might only have 10 minutes to prepare. But it's how you adapt to your circumstances that shows who the true winners can be. Stylistically, can you beat the other competitor? Can you pr pr prove that you're the superior athlete? And of course, uh, the other rounds of this oh. right here at Highspots TV tomorrow. And Yehai had the hair. Yehai with a suspect kick from what I saw. Just trying to neutralize Tankman however he can. This cravat leaves Tankman susceptible to these knees. And notice that pad has been pulled down. That's bone of knee going into the forehead of Tankman. Oh, and now Yehai, those short punches, driving the knuckles into the forehead of Calvin Tankman. Now he hits the ropes, full steam ahead. Tankman pops him up. Oh! So much mass, so much velocity. There's a power bomb now. Stacks him on the cover. Can Tankman do it? Oh, Yehai able to kick out, but at what cost? Oh, Tankman went for that back fist. Went to finish off Yehai with that one little opening, that one little break in contact. And Yehai's going for a third county clutch. Yeah, yeah, doesn't have the fingers locked. Now he's just wrenching at the arm. Oh, look at the position, look at the, the, the shoulder, the torque on that. Oh, abandons the hold, and now look at the stop on the back of the head. One more time, back to his bread and butter. Can't clasp those hands, but he's hitting with those rabbit punches. Tankman's out cold, and Fred Yehai advances to the next round. By virtue of the knockouts. 56 seconds, your winner in advancing to the next round, Fred Yehai! Well, you see the brutality of Fred Yehai personified. He could not navigate the limbs of Tankman from a dead weight position into that coach. He clutched too much weight, but Yehai just punches the hell out of Tankman until Tankman cannot intelligently defend himself. And referee perch for the safety of these athletes, which is paramount, stops this matchup to protect Tankman.